You're listening to The Lovish Podcast, and I'm your host, Dr. Sita Hood, vision architect and licensed therapist. Each week, I'm going to help you to develop the belief and strategy necessary to make an immediate impact on the world by deep diving into topics like mental wellness, faith, relationships, and you guessed it, love. I should mention before we hop into the show, this is not a substitute for a relationship with a licensed therapist. You ready? Let's get it. Welcome back for another episode of the Lovish Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Sita Hood, vision architect and licensed therapist. And I want to let you know that if you are listening to this on your favorite listening platform, it's another video podcast. And I realized that I forgot to say that for like three weeks straight, but you can pretty much anticipate that every episode from here is going to be a video podcast in conjunction with the audio. So if you would rather watch it, head on over to my YouTube channel and subscribe, become part of the family. And if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Today, we are talking about how to make friends as a grown woman because it's hard out here in these streets. And y'all know that my brain thinks in songs. So what I heard when I just said that, you know, it's hard out here for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent, you ain't no beep. <laughs> I'm not going to say that part on the podcast. Okay, <laughs> moving on. What's in your mug today? I have a venti iced chai tea latte and it's fine and it's giving summer. What's in your mug? Okay, all right. If you feel inclined to do so, leave it below in the notes if you are watching this or tag me on social media and let me know what's in your mug. I want to know what y'all be sipping on while y'all be listening to the podcast because y'all be hitting me up separately afterwards sometimes. Let me know what y'all drinking. You know, you might put somebody else on in terms of what to order from a particular restaurant or coffee shop like Starbucks. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. In 2023, we have the most ways to connect, but the least amount of deep connections with people. Ain't that crazy? I feel like it's because we have so much access to people that we take relationships for granted. There is a quote or saying, absence make the heart grow fonder. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. But I feel like because in today's world, we have so much tech that instantly connects you, we don't even have time for absence to even happen. Because as soon as you meet somebody, you and you like exchange their social media information, boom, you got access or as much access as they share with their immediate world, you have access to them and you feel like you know them because you're privy to certain parts of their day, the parts that they feel comfortable showing. And so we feel like we have an inside scoop on somebody's life and the art a friendship is lost. We don't know how to simply support people or how to show people that we're in their corner anymore or how to even make friends because of social media, because we got all of these podcasts, not this one, <laughs> but because we have all of these podcasts with these people that just feel like talking because it's a Wednesday that have no expertise and no experience in the things that they're talking about. They're just sharing an opinion. Have you ever met that one family member that has strong opinions about things? And you over here are like, let me just say this. Let, let's just take marriage because that's the easiest example. You have a family member that has a really strong opinion about marriage, but has never been married. And they're not in a field where they would be privy to anything surrounding a relationship, right? So they have no professional experience, no experience besides observations on the outside. Now, if that person is mature, becoming mature, studies people, is empathetic, understands the stories, etc., they might know what they're talking about, but they don't know wholly what they're talking about. There is a strong difference between being in a relationship with somebody that cheated versus uh, observing somebody in a relationship that cheated. 
you can't say how that person would feel, but you have these people that have never been in that situation that's saying all of this stuff and telling you what you should do with your life and they ain't got no clue what to do with their life because they never been there and they've never had to advise somebody to get there. So I think that's part of the problem with establishing relationships. We have all of this quotation mark advice out here that's actually jamming people up and it's actually harmful. The bottom line to all of this advice, even my advice, right? Advice that anybody gives you, you've got to do what works for you and what is in alignment with what God told you for your life. That's it. It doesn't matter if it's your mama, your auntie, your granny, you got to do what's in alignment and what works best for your life based on where God has you. That's it. That's all. So I want to give you a couple of pointers in my professional and personal experience of helping people to improve their relationships. I mean, it's not like I wrote a book on relationships, right? I did, y'all. It's called 20 Days to Better Relationships, the workbook. (laughs) No, but seriously, let's dive in. The first thing I'm gonna tell you is the first thing that I always tell you. Get clear on your expectations. What do you want? What do you desire in this relationship? Do you want a brunch friend? You want a fitness friend? You want a mom friend? You want a travel friend? You want a deep talks friend? What kind of friendship are you looking for? I teach the relationship ranking system in 24K Vision, 90 Day Accelerator, but you can find a surface level version of that right here on my YouTube channel, right here on the podcast in episode 27. And I will link that down below where we talk about the different expectations that you have for people on different levels based on your experiences, based on how you treat them, they treat you, etc. I'm not going to deep dive into that um, right now into this episode. You can go back and watch that, but that's the first thing. What are you expecting from this relationship? Are you expecting an entry level of friendship? And we got to understand that every person that you meet is not going to fit in your top tier category. Some people are going to be in your entry level friends. Some people are going to be your mom friends that are at the gym. And that's okay. That's okay. Because if everybody was in your quotation mark top tier level of friendship, that means that you're probably not really having meaningful life changing connections with anybody. Because if everybody is on the same level or treats you the same and you treat them the same, where is the authenticity? Like, Either you wearing your heart on your sleeve and you're getting hurt a lot and you lack boundaries or you're too tight and nobody has access to you. So what type of friend do you want? What are you expecting from this relationship? Be cool, but be you. Don't obsess. I want you to think about this the same way that you do dating. This is not the person to pour your heart and your soul into like, pipe down, Pollyanna. Relax a little bit, okay? <laughs> You're going to scare people off if you jump too hardcore into the relationship too fast. First of all, only God should be snatching your little, like, period. Nobody should be out here snatching your soul, okay? Nobody should be doing that. But in the same token, God does use people to really enhance or improve your life, but it's not just one person. So you cannot go into a relationship expecting to be fulfilled by one person. And I think that's a mistake that we make a lot of times in dating and in friendships. We're expecting this one thing or all these things from this one person. When in reality, sometimes you might not get it in one person. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And you just have to be okay with that. If you meet somebody, the very first thing that you want to do, peep game, okay? Peep their interactions, peep how they treat people, peep their level of empathy, peep it. Just watch. Just like if you like, okay, sis seem like she cool. All right. Mm -mm, Let me see. Because contrary to what you might be thinking, you can actually see if somebody is empathetic in the first couple of interactions. And it's simple things. Do they hold the door open for people behind them? Do they say thank you? Right? Like how do they treat janitors or baristas or you know, people that are in service positions, how do they treat those people? How do they look at them? Do they acknowledge them? You know, one of the things that I do that I'm very intentional about doing, I say thank you when a waiter pours my water or takes away my plate. And I do that because I want to acknowledge their existence. So many times I'm in a restaurant or in a place of service where someone is literally serving you. And I see people that continue on with the conversation or 
don't acknowledge that somebody just took away their plate or, and that's just a common courtesy, in my opinion, to give acknowledgement to people that are going out of their way to serve you. So even if they refill my cup five times, because I'd be killing that water at the restaurant, I'm saying thank you five times. So you can peep how people feel about other human beings, even from the very first few interactions, you know, those little things matter. If it's cold outside and you're not holding the door for me when I'm at the school picking up my child and it's snow and I was like two feet behind you and you saw me and you didn't hold the door. I'm judging you. Yep. I said it. (laughs) Yes, that is based on a true story. Thank you for asking. That did happen to me. And I'm over here like, "Mm, okay. (laughs) But you, the point being, you can peep game and you can peep a person's certain traits or things about them in those small interactions. Is that the whole thing that you should be looking at? No, but you can see in those small interactions how they feel about other people. You can get excited, but you have to just watch, just let things unfold. You might meet somebody who seems like they are super cool and then all of a sudden they turn into a Karen on you. Is that a true story also a true story yes speaking from personal experience so do not count one or two really great experiences as proof people need clout they need grit they gotta demonstrate that their character is even consistent because (laughs) some of the things you know I had several events or whatever and this happens quite often where you have some events and people meet each other and they seem to be like really cool and then you know they establish friendships or relationships and then after a couple months go by and you hear the person talking and you see how they interact with others you kind of like that's not what I was looking for in a friend and so the beauty of slowing down the process is that you don't form the heavy attachment right away and again you will want to go back to episode 27 because you don't necessarily need to cut that person out of your life you just know where to categorize them for lack of better words okay okay our final tip for today beware of past triggers do not judge them according to the things that you are supposed to have healed from What that means is if I said that I no longer want to be a gossip and I don't want to be in relationship with people that gossip so tough, like maybe I have interactions with them, but they're not my top tier level. If I don't want to do that and I meet somebody and I find that they gossip a lot, then that's not going to be one of my top tier people because that is in accordance with my old standards of friendships and what I was looking for in relationships. And truth be told, if I link up with somebody that gossip all the time and that was a thing for me and I determined that I didn't want to do it anymore, that might get me into a trap. That might get me into a snare. So we probably should create some distance there. Not saying that you can't be friends with them, but you have to be aware of the potential for you. There are people that activate positive things in us and there are people that activate negative things in us. I am always talking about the person that you become when you are in relationship with certain people and why that matters for your future and who you are trying to become, right? So if you're trying to become this wholehearted, compassionate person and you keep finding yourself linking up with people that are the opposite of that, you got to explore some patterns. You got to see what it is that you're looking at and that you're drawn to. And you probably need to go to therapy, work that out, figure that out, you know, then go back to the drawing board and looking for friendships. Just keeping it on it, okay? Make sure that you have cleaned off your glasses when you are making your assessment. Meaning do not judge through rose-colored lenses. Outcast said it best. I know you like to think you don't stink, but lean a little bit closer. See your roses really smell like boo, boo, boo. Basically, this goes back to the episode on confidence lessons from Cardi and Lizzo. Do not judge a book by its cover. Again, you cannot judge those actions, like whether somebody holds the door or whatever. Like maybe they was having a bad day that day. Like you can't judge their entire character off of those simple actions. You should be looking at those experiences, but you can't make a full assessment. That's why you got to fall back and peep game, see how they are, see how they operate, see how they talk to people, see what they do, what they're about. That all matters. 
It's time to talk about what I've been loving. Product recommendations, shout outs to family and friends, and overall gratitude. Let's get into it. Welcome back for another What I've Been Loving. I have been loving for three days and three days only my hair. The hair is straight. For those of y'all that are listening, it's straight. And all my clients been like, oh my God, Dr. Edge, I have so cute. I'm like, y'all, don't don't get used to it because I'm going to the gym. And I've been loving it because I've been creating stories that are comical to me and to some of y'all because y'all been responding to my stories and y'all been voting because I put up a poll on my stories if you're not following me on Instagram, that's where I'd be most active at, especially in my stories. So I put up a poll in my stories to say, should I go to the gym and sweat out my hair? Or do I just like skip the gym this week and let my hair just live its best little straight life for as long as possible? A lot of y'all, most of y'all was like, girl, go have a cookie. (laughs) Don't go to the gym. Let your hair be straight. But some of y'all, some of y'all was out here talking about sis hit the gym and I'm over here like y'all don't care about my money though anyway I did hit the gym because we got we got goals we got body goals so I hit the gym and the hair is going goodbye but that's what I've been loving I love the versatility of black hair like y'all saw me on a podcast episode and how my shrinkage was insane right because some days my hair be popping and it be looking like it's long and other days that shrinkage be like tight but That's what I've been loving. How about you? What have you been loving? If you enjoyed today's episode, share the love. Share it with your mama, share it with your auntie, share it with your best friend. Then head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. Reviews help the podcast to grow. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I'll see you out in these social media streets. Bye.